Hello, I'm Lux, and this was awesome. And I'm Ember, and yes, it was. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 5, Chapters 13 and 14, Season Finale. Okay, these were two very nice end caps to this season. There was so much going on. So we got the team back together, we disassembled the White Fang, we got one of the relics. Chuck up one win for Team Ruby! <laughs> I like the fight scenes with Adam and Blake, though I wish he would have been hit more. A lot more. But I have a feeling we're going to get some comeuppance. But the emotional damage that was done to Adam was really nice. Yes, yes, very good. And I like how strong Blake is, though I can't wait for next season, mainly because I want to see what kind of interactions we have between Yang and Blake. That's going to be interesting. Also, talking about those two made me think of what the relationship may have been like between Emerald and Cinder. Because she seemed to care about her more than just someone she really looked up to and saved her. The part that Lux just said is the part of the story we know. It's the part of the story that we don't know that's gotten this level of devotion from Emerald. And we'll get to it later in the episode, but we have some new theories. Specifically about what happens after Cinder. But let's start off with episode 13. And all the fun stuff that was happening there, like Yang's reaction to... Mercury trying to grab her as she's about to run down, and letting her arm go. At the same time, her eyes go from battle craze to normal. So she did that in all calmness. She calmed herself down is the key there. She went from rage to calm. Not that she didn't calm this, she was able to turn off her rage. And just all the interesting stuff, like apparently that guy's semblance is to ignore pain. And that's why he can take so much dust on. Hazel, yes. And all the crazy stuff I like the fight scene between Hazel and Nora. Like, well, that's nice. Because electric. And I love how, ow, she's feeling pain. And then suddenly, I just want him to go down. And Nora, just hit him with the hammer. And out the building he goes. And I love how Blake showed up and how that went. I like how they involved Ilya and how the White Fang people were kind of confused because we really don't want to shoot our own people, but they're attacking us. And Adam's not doing a good job. Adam's kind of freaking out and everyone's like, we don't know. And we're going to get a formation of a new organization and all the fun stuff. I thought you were trying to stick to episode 13, but we're just going to jump back and forth. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Well, go back to episode 13, please. <laughs> no, no, we watched them back to back and they're the finale, so it's basically a two-part finale. Everything, everything is all one cohesive piece. Because, you know, we ha we dealt with the White Fang over both episodes. We dealt with getting the Relic over both episodes. Why do you keep gesturing at me? Because I'm talking a lot, and I want you to jump in more. <laughs> uh, I don't have that much to say. <laughs> I was wondering why I was talking so much. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot to say. It was really good. I liked all the fight scenes. I like how Ruby can continue to be calm most of the time. They had the advantage, so she was like, okay, everybody stop. And something else, when you said Ruby reminded me of when she was fighting Mercury, and he was like, what are you going to do now, headbutt? <laughs> oh dear, lost your side, little girl. What are you going to do? Kick the snot out of you? What else? And just all the wonderful things, the way they did the fight scenes, the way the characters are interacting, the way Wise is interacting with Jean and how she was like, thanks. And he's like, glad you're back. <laughs> like, oh, great. I'm stuck with you until I, I'm healed. I'm like, well, she feels well enough to be sarcastic. Yep. Yeah, I'm happy about this. 
his last thing, it kind of explains why his primary, like, basically, weapon is a shield. Even though he has a sword, he's, like, mostly used just the shield, Jean. He's, he's like, the shield for everyone. Symbolically. Well, I think as they explore his semblance more, we'll find out whether it's more of pure healing, or it's that he amplifies the aura of others. Well, he specifically said that he didn't feel like he was healing her, that he was amplifying her own aura so that she could heal herself. And Nora reacted like, isn't that draining? He goes, well, I have a lot of aura. And I still believe Pira because she said I have that, so. Yes, but what I'm saying is if it's specifically, well, more in terms of a generality, that Jean can share his aura with others that would mean it's not limited to healing. That he could give someone a power boost offensively, not just defensively. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about it that way at the time. Possible. Well, Jean goes out of his way to think to state he doesn't think he's healing Wise. Well, Wise is obviously being healed and Jean's semblance has something to do with it. So I think part of what we'll learn next season is some of the parameters of his semblance. I mean, it only took us five chapters to find it. Well, it's kind of one of those things. You'll know it when you see it. Or, it will find you when the time's appropriate. Or, it's like, wait, you're telling us we went on this big journey and the entire time we had the answer with us. I hate you, old riddles. I hate you. <laughs> like, we had it with us the entire time. Why did no one tell us? You had to find out on your own. I don't care. <laughs> and the whole thing going on with Cinder and Raven down below. That was fun. And interesting. Very interesting. Especially when you see them both powered up as full maidens. Because Cinder only has one eye change. And Raven has both eyes changed. Well, here's the thing. One eye's missing on Cinder. You obviously see that when she goes falling down off the bridge at the climax of their fight. And speaking of that climax, is she dead? And if yes, who's getting the maiden power? Also, does it still work the way that it was said that it works? And if so, there are multiple possibilities. Because first, okay, did Cinder survive or not? Because one, the frozen body of Cinder had to not shatter when it hit whatever surface it finally collided with. Two, she has to unfreeze herself and three, she has to get out of there. Though I find it interesting that the Fall Maiden's power is fire and the Spring Maiden's power seems to be ice. Though I do remember Raven being frozen by Cinder. So maybe it's just a Maiden power. Also, Cinder seemed to have fire elemental powers before she was a Maiden. Well, yeah. I mean, her name's Cinder Fall. There's a pun there with her at the end falling. Especially with the lyrics in the song. Yes, all of that stuff about it's time to die and ashes and your swan song. Well, the ashes being scattered and stuff like that. I'm like, Cinder falling off the bridge. Cinder fall. Yarr. Yes, yes. So here are the possibilities if she died and the power still works the way we think it does. One, Raven now has two. Count them, two. Maiden powers. Count them two. Ah, ah, ah. Two maiden powers. Another possibility is Emerald is now a maiden. And a third very iffy possibility is Salem. That's very, very iffy. Now, there's also the option of the powers don't work the way they should anymore because of the way Cinder got the powers. So there's a couple of interesting ones there. Like, one... John could actually end up becoming a maiden because of a weird series of events. A couple of weird things. One, John was near the container that had the previous maiden before Cinder got the powers. Two, Pyrrha was thinking of John when she died and she may have been partially in control of some of the powers because of what happened to the previous maiden, so maybe John has the powers. So yeah, there's that stuff. Also, one of the possibilities you left off, once again, is Ruby as Maiden. Because Cinder could have been thinking of Ruby. Because 
oh, great, I'm falling. How am I going to get my revenge against that girl? Because she is ridiculously obsessed with taking Ruby out. Possible. Because it doesn't have to be someone you like. It has to be someone who's in your thoughts. Just, that's a weird kind of crazy stuff going on there. And to elaborate on why we think Cinder is very unlikely to have passed the powers over to Salem, either Salem can't take the maiden powers or she doesn't want the maiden powers. Because otherwise, why use Cinder to get the maiden powers? Because it's power. So wouldn't Salem want power for herself? So with the relics, the question is, is it the maidens that are important? Or are the maidens just a means to the end to get the relics? Also, what kind of powers was this lantern supposed to have? I think they may have been mentioned in a part where Ozpin was explaining things. When he was talking a little bit about the relics, yes. We'll need to delve backwards. Also, the instrumental that was playing when Yang went to get the lyrics, I'm like, oh, that's one of the songs slowed down. Why can't I identify it? I want to say it was gold. Uh, initially, I wanted to say that it was I Burn, obviously, because Yang. Yang. But I almost want to say it was gold. Hmm. We have to listen to that song again. Because there have been lots of older songs as, instru as instrumentals in this volume. Well, in last volume, too, because certain songs are identified with certain characters, so using them instrumental helps accentuate and helps you subconsciously think of which character you should be focused on. And that reminds me, speaking of characters to focus on, I like the creature Y summoned. <laughs> the Queen Bee. Her most recent acquisition. Also, ouch, that guy got skewered right through the... How does he live through that? Because I get the you can ignore pain, but your body still has limits. But apparently his aura can recharge really fast and maybe that's part of the healing. Well, his aura was recharging super fast because he was stabbing dust directly into his body. I think that has nothing to do with that. <laughs> Just wow. <laughs> also how exhausted everyone was and... Oh, the reunion stuff, and I, I like how she's like, well, I'm staying, and that's when Yang kind of went, I'll give her a chance. Mm -hmm. Also, where is her arm? Where did Mercury put her arm? Did he just drop it? Did he take it with him? You know, because those things don't grow on trees. <laughs> no, they're rather expensive, but they are going back to Atlas, so ah. she could get another one if needed. More Ironwood. Going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure Wise is going to be so thrilled to go back to Atlas. She's like, I just left there. Well, she's going to have the entire gang with her. And boy, is her father and brother going to be so happy when she comes home. Oh, yes. I, I highly recommend they go straight to Ironwood. You know, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Just go straight to Ironwood. Are you talking about her father and brother or Ruby group? Ruby group, go straight to Ironwood. Do not bother with anything else. Don't go to the school, anything. Just go straight to Ironwood. Because that's one of the agents that I'm betting has not been corrupted by Salem. I think he's too stubborn. One, he's too stubborn. Two, if we go the Tin Man route, I don't think he is controlled enough by emotions to allow fear to take him over to Salem's side. Oh, it wouldn't be fear that she would use to turn him, but... When I said stubborn, I mean stubborn because of rules. Stubborn because of his sense of justice. And stubborn in that he's probably one of those who will make necessary sacrifices for the greater good. Which would be the route Salem would take, is to try to convince him that her way is ultimately for the greater good. Not gonna happen. Ironwood is still firmly on Team Oz. It's gonna be interesting. I also said that her father and brother wouldn't be happy. Because, one, she's more confident now, wise. And two, she has all three of her friends with her. And they're all extremely powerful. And they're not going to like her father one bit. So painful things are going to happen to him. Probably especially from Yang, because Yang's probably gotten the most background out of any of them. Because wise shared her story with Yang when Yang was going into moody withdrawals because of Blake's absence. Now that you say that, 
Yang isn't going to have to lay a finger on either of them. Just her presence and her tone of voice is going to scare them to the point where they're going to need to wear the brown pants, just to put it mildly. <laughs> Lots of interesting things to look forward to. So any other points you'd like to go over? Anything I've missed that we wanted to talk about? Intro song, Cinder and Renal. Oh yeah, since we know that they both died, we wanted to see if the song mentioned anything about them dying. It kind of does. Because at that point, when Cinder and Renal are looking at each other, the lyrics talk about how no one's going to win. Mm. It, it seems unwinnable i believe is the exact lyric because from there it goes into all we need is a miracle switching over to raven and yang so yeah that kind of points to cinder not surviving or having survived in such a way that she's no longer going to be a valid player in the game because if cinder loses her powers salem's not going to be interested in her anymore so if she managed to survive and lose the powers or if it takes too much work to put Cinder back together again, she could find somebody else to do to Cinder what Cinder did to the Fall Maiden and just steal the power. Mm. Also, my brain is going since Cinder's name and profile is based on Cinderella. Maybe there's something about a glass slipper, how fragile it is. Eh, something to think about. So that's going to depend on whether you go with the Disney Cinderella or the... Stepsisters cut off half their feet to try and fit the shoes version of Cinderella. Yeah. Older versions of the fairy tales were the ones where we're teaching you a lesson whether you like it or not. And the lesson was not work hard and be good, which is Disney Cinderella. It was watch the frick out. And another thing I remembered is what happened to Emerald Mercury and them during that last fight scene where Emerald kind of freaked out. Which I'm thinking is another hint that she's now the maiden. And how it actually basically summoned that illusion of Salem. And how it nicely fits into the intro. And how the intro also showed us hints of what the battlefield was going to look like at the, at the end of the season. So, I think we covered everything? Oh, well, there's no way we've covered everything. Well, everything we wanted to cover. <laughs> Well, one of our predictions was wrong. Oscar didn't get control of the body back from Oz to talk Hazel down. I would have enjoyed that. Yeah, well, maybe in the future, because I think there's something there. I think there is, but by the time Hazel and Oscar meet again, how assimilated will Oscar be? Because right now they switch back and forth. It's like Yami Yugi. It's one or the other, but eventually it's all going to be one. Well, maybe by then... Ozpin would have learned something. We can hope. But I just like how Oscar was struggling to stay conscious to deliver Ozpin's message. You know, how much Oscar has gone from, I never wanted any of this, to pretty much buying in wholeheartedly. Well, I think he's had some good lessons to direct him that way. But, I mean, that's how much character growth. It's a ton. He goes from, from being this farm boy to basically being possessed by a wizard. Well, he's had two volumes worth of progress. And I'm saying he's made good progress. So, shall we wrap things up? Mm-hmm. My final words are, I can't wait for next volume! Which is already in the works. Also, that new show, the Gen thing, looks interesting. Genlock? Yeah, Genlock. That one looks interesting. Yeah, but I'm like, gosh, another mecha show? I'm still burned out from the 90s. <laughs> Uh, I think that's the perfect place to go to. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 5, Chapters 13 and 14, Season Finale. Oh, you're still here? Well, we were a little bit longer than two episodes of Ruby. Uh, come, have a seat. Uh, you're just here to subscribe, share, and like. Oh, how kind of you. Oh, you would also like to leave a comment. Well, thank you. And is that, is, is that you trying to hand me money for art? Well, yes, I can do that, but that's going to happen a little bit later. I have to tell you where to find it first. Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, DeviantArt, Google+, and a very of other sites. And those are all in links down below. Oh, yes, you're still handing me the money. If you would like some art of your own, 
I have a link below for commissions. Pricing stays the same. Availability can vary, you know, real life. Oh, you just want to give the money to the channel itself. Well, we have two options for that. We have a Patreon where you can still get art and you can vote on it and make suggestions. That's for a dollar a month. Oh, um, you don't want a monthly thing. Okay, well, we have Coffee, ko K-O-F-I. It's a link down below as well. And that's $3 one time. Well, thank you. And thanks to all the people who are already on Patreon.